It's the place where we dare to ask, is Walmart a person? And we dare to say, no, I don't care what the Supreme Court says. <laughs> it's a corporation, it's not a person. Come on, give me a break. John in Charleston, South Carolina. Hey, John, what's on your mind today? Well, I got, I got a question for you. Um, I was listening to some of the things you were talking about regarding slavery and 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 what's going on in today's you know society um i guess what the media doesn't talk about is that slavery was brought to this country by the africans slavery was a common uh, john that was i'm sorry i'm not even going to go there yes there was slavery in some african countries yes there was slavery in rome Yes, there was slavery in Greece, and, and I suppose you could argue that there were some practices in, in Europe at the time that were close to that, indentured. But none of that slavery was brought to North America, period, by white people. White people made the choice to go to Africa and start kidnapping people or, or engaging local people, and yes, some, many, most of them were probably black people, but engaging local people to, to, in their crime, that would not have happened without white Europeans. So that is the most disingenuous, BS, racist argument I have, well, I was going to say I've ever heard, but I've heard it that my entire life. This is, this is what white people tell themselves very comfortably. Oh, it wasn't us. It wasn't my ancestors. It was those, it was, uh, they're, 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 they're not the victims, they're the perpetrators. Don't you get it? So this is the message that you know racist whites hang on to in order to justify their racism, and it's terrible. Judd in Las Vegas. Hey, Judd, what's up? Hey, how you doing, Tom? I'm well. What's on your mind? Nice to talk to you today. Thanks, um, I was just listening to your part of, about um, you know the loans and the CFPB yeah. uh, allowing these horrible rates on auto loans yep. uh, for for people of color. Yep. And last August, I started. Uh, I met a young lady at my doctor's office, and we've been seeing each other for several months now, and she had this car loan I've been helping her out with, and um, I couldn't believe when I finally got on the phone and talked to this company. Well, you know, I was trying to get figure things out, and mm. now i got to try to get it refied. But I just, when, when they told me the rate, I about just, I, I don't know. What was I mean, she paying as the interest rate? 27 percent. Yeah, that's that's credit card interest rates. And that's what they're doing. Uh, that, and this the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau identified that uh, poor people and particularly poor black people were being hit with these obscene interest rates. And they actually started recovering money from these companies. So the companies right. went out and spent five million dollars to buy senators. And they just got this thing passed that, that forbids that's the horrible. Consumer Financial Protection Bureau from, you know, uh, from, from continuing to protect us. Yep. Now, she's been in this car loan for two years, at, you know, like a $15,000 loan, yeah. and there's not even barely $1,000 paid off yeah. because of late, was, late was she Is, is she a person rate, of color, or was she a poor person? I mean, what... what, what? She's, a, she's a beautiful, young uh, 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 African-American girl. Yeah. Okay, so there you go. I mean, this is... This and, is yeah. Go ahead, Judd. Yeah. I'm, I'm in love. <laughs> That's sweet. That's sweet. Well, help yeah. her, help her yeah. get her car refied, and, and <laughs> good luck. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of hard to refi something that, you know, has a $14,000 principal, uh, and, and you look it up on KBB, and the trade-in value is 6000 Oh, yeah. Yeah, that is a so, challenge. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm going to do what I can, you know. Might have to just put her into something new with my name on it. And, yeah, because otherwise, this is know. another example of how uh, poor people and people of color are also stuck into multi generational debt, or at least throughout yeah. their lifetime debt. She buys a car for $20,000, gets a $20,000 mortgage or loan on it, but the interest rate's so high that she's never paying down the principal. So four years later, when the loan yeah. expires, she still owes $20,000, and the car is now worth three, you know, or two. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it is. It's it's wrong. It's is what it is. It's wrong. Yep. Judd, sure thanks. Is. Thanks. Thanks for the call, and, and good on you for being a good boyfriend there, or friend. Uh, Eugene in Laplace, Louisiana. Hey, Eugene, what's in what's on your mind? Hey, Tom, how you doing? I'm well. What's up? Yeah, good. I'm glad you corrected the guy about slavery. You know, um, yeah, slavery always has been on the planet, but it was for one or three reasons. 
even religious reasons, uh, the spoils of war, or death. Slavery in the United States is the only slavery that ever was ever referred to as a peculiar situation. Peculiar, because the Africans did not owe the Europeans anything. Right. There was no religious persecution, no war. That's why it was called a peculiar situation. Yeah. Well, and, and that was also the, the, the code that everybody kind of agreed on in the South to use to refer to slavery as that peculiar institution. Um, because they're, right. they're, I, I think you're right. I mean, the, 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 the Romans, uh, you know, they expanded slavery as they moved across Europe, but they did it by conquering people. You're absolutely right. The Greeks, the same thing. Um, uh, the uh, slavery that was uh, even practiced by, there were, there were a couple of Native American tribes in the Pacific Northwest that practiced slavery, but it was typically of that variety. It was, it was, the, it was the spoils of war. The idea of building an entire country's economy on slavery, virtually exclusively. I mean, an economy that would not or could not exist, or at least not with the vibrancy that it did without slavery. That's something that is unique to the American experience, as far as I can tell. I, maybe I'm wrong, and Eugene, maybe somebody will call up and correct me, but I don't think this has ever been done anywhere else in the world. Back to you. No, and, and, and it hasn't, because of the fact that <clears throat> slavery in the United States was called chattel slavery, that which was never referred to ever in the history of slavery right. on the globe. Now, uh, in uh, you take this like in Europe or in the Philip, uh, 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 in the times of Paul, Apostle Paul, mm -hmm. slavery, slaves were treated like family members. They dressed well, they ate well. Was treated well, like let's let's be careful about down. engaging in revisionistic history uh, on this one too, Eugene, because we don't really know, and the odds are, if somebody's a slave, their life is crap. Yeah, but at the same time, some of them volunteered to stay in it because of the fact that they were treated well. Well, that's because uh, my understanding of you know f from having read uh, Gibbons on the on the rise and fall of the Roman Empire is that uh, some people wanted to be Roman slaves because that was better than, if you couldn't, if you had no possibility at all to be a Roman citizen, at least you weren't homeless and hungry. But, but you know, and, and that argument has been brought forward to say, oh, well, this chattel slavery in the United States, hold it. But it's a completely different thing. It was a different social structure. It was different political structures. There was a different concept of citizenship. Um, there, was very, there were very few, actually, Roman citizens, uh, you know, relative right. to the size of the empire. So it was right. a very, very, it wasn't like in the United States where, you know, the, the, the majority population are citizens. And so, you know, those kind of parallels can be real dangerous. But right. okay. any, anyhow, Eugene, well said. I, I, I need to move okay. along, but thanks for the call. Pam in Chicago. Hey, Pam, uh, you wanted to talk about the Starbucks arrest. Uh, absolutely. Um, just looking at that video, Tom, and thank you for this conversation and your honest discussion as a white man on this issue. I just, you know, wish you could write something that would educate the rest of the white community, as we phrase it. Yeah. But I saw the pain, Tom, on those men's faces and the look, you know, he just had, you know, like, here we go again. Yep. So. Well, at least he wasn't this, shot. Right. And that's a that's a horrible commentary on the state of American <laughs> policing. But but, you know, I'm sure that there right. are, you know, in the back of that guy's head are those two guys who got hauled off. I'll bet, I'll bet at least one of them was thinking, well, at least I didn't get a shot. And that, I mean, that's bizarre. Excuse me, Exactly. Pam. And then, Tom, when you saw the white gentleman, their friend, come in and was combative with the police, said, well, why are you arresting them? Are you arresting them because they're black? They're just here meeting me. Now, had that been a black person to do that, they would have been arrested for obstruction of justice. Yep. yep. So, Tom, let me just talk about the um the enslavement of black people, <clears throat> because I, I don't think people understand this country has profited from the enslavement of black people and others and racism. And we always want to ask, well, what would reparations look like? How can we bring fairness and justice? And, and this is what I say to the white community, Tom. We need exactly what the white people in this country receive to make us whole. And, and am I clear about that time? We need a period of time where we, where we're given land, mm. where we're given access to banking, financing, where we're given the opportunity to have no competition for the myriad of jobs in various industries. 
Now, I know it's not likely we'll get that, but what I'm asking the white community to understand is what made them whole as a community? What programs and services and legislation helped them? That, in turn, is what we need. And that... And last... Excuse does me. that make sense, Tom? It does, and I just wanted to add it real quickly because we're going to hit a break here shortly, Pam. Oh, sure. but, but, you know, that... I mean, we can go back to the, the first 300 years or 400 years of the United States, you know, of the North American's history. But when my dad came back from World War II, he was able to go to college on the GI Bill and buy a house on the GI Bill. And, and his colleagues who were in the military with him during World War II who were black couldn't. I mean, this is not and, some ancient thing. And that's all I'm saying. And, Tom, lastly, I'm going to leave you with this. Tom, I don't want to promote someone, but I'd like to, <clears throat> here in Chicago, we have a Mr. Salim Wakil who has a radio show on Saturday. I'd love for you and, and he to have a dialogue with each other. He is along the lines of um, the Black Eagle, right? Uh-huh, of um, Joe, uh, Joe Madison, Madison, yeah. Is he on yeah, uh, WCPT, Salim, Pam? Uh, no, he's not. He's not, okay. uh, at least not yet. Okay. But he has been an invited guest All right. on well, those shows. I, I will check it out. Pam, thank you for the call, and thanks for the suggestion. Generally speaking, we ask people who want to make show suggestions to so just share that information with Arthur. We'll be right back.